This is ABC Fora. Good morning. It's, it's great to be here. Thanks uh, for having me. So it seems to me that when we look at the issues that face us today in the world, we'd like things to be simple, wouldn't we? We'd like answers, preferably one answer, really, and preferably a succinct and decisive answer. Indeed, it seems to me that we're living amid a general trend to simplify and isolate ideas, questions, and problems as much as possible. In education, for example, we segregate subjects into neat little parts presented in simple ways to be learned by rote and reported back. On television, conversation is driven by short segments and sound bites. Media training encourages us to summarize, uh, to synopsize, to condense. Indeed, perhaps the newspaper's decline comes in part from a 30-year trend toward soft news and infotainment. Here we have the colorful USA Today. In particular, it's uh, been cited as the primary example of post-television news, or what some call Mick News, ideas packaged and crayon-colored for appeal rather than for complexity. One might add to this list the blog, with its focus on immediacy and recentness and conciseness, where lists and top tens and scoops are the predominant way of communicating. Or perhaps even Twitter, whose 140-character constraint encourages us to soundbite the mundane as well as the remarkable in our lives. But things, of course, aren't simple. They're complicated, and they're more complicated now than ever before. And the reason I'm interested in video games is related to this. They are, it seems to me, the one popular medium that embraces that complexity rather than shying away from it. And therein, there is a power that hasn't yet been fully exploited, but has begun to be done. So let me give you an example, and it's an example I discuss in uh, my book, Persuasive Games, and it's an example about a commercial game, uh, not a so-called serious game, uh, called Animal Crossing. Has anyone played this game, just out of curiosity? Ah, oh, excellent, okay, only a couple. So Animal Crossing is a, a lovely game that's wonderful for kids because you start by running away from home. <laughs> and you arrive in this, uh, this lovely, idyllic little village filled with animals, and you're the only human in the village. And of course, um, you didn't plan very well when you ran away. Uh, so you don't have anything uh, really with you, no money, uh, just a pack on your back. Uh, but, but fortunately, um, uh, Animal Crossing is equipped with a real estate tycoon of sorts uh, named Tom Nook. He's a raccoon and uh, offers you a little hut to move into. It's no trouble, he says. Uh, you can just work for me to, uh, to you know, make back the, uh, uh, the home that he's provided. Um, so you, know, you, you, you buy the game for uh, $50 at the store and and you bring it home and excitedly put it into your Nintendo and uh, fire it up, and, uh, and the first thing you do is get a mortgage. <laughs> now, you know, once you have your house, then there are many other activities you can take part in. You can visit with the other, uh, the other animals, and sometimes you have to do favors for them or, or, uh, or service uh, Tom Nook's demands as you work in his shop. You can, you can go fishing and uh, collect insects, and uh, you can sell those back to, uh, to the general store where you can use the proceeds to purchase things for your home. Certainly, we all like to customize our environment. And uh, In fact, Tom Nook also runs the, the general store, it turns out, uh, or you can, you can buy things from him. He's kind of cornered the market in Animal Crossing. Uh, or you can, you can go and make your own, uh, your own uh, umbrellas or designs for shirts and uh, kind of customize the way that you look. And time passes in Animal Crossing. Uh, it's uh, tied to your console clock. Uh, so as the seasons change or as the day changes to night, then those changes are reflected in the environment and there's a kind of um, idyllic uh, pastoral nature to the world. Now, um, over time, uh, you know, maybe you've, you've succeeded in uh, catching enough fish or doing enough favors that you begin to pay down that mortgage and uh, uh, Tom Nook might offer that, uh, you know, perhaps you'd like to expand, maybe a, a second floor uh, or, or a basement. Uh, Many options, certainly, to, uh, to facilitate your increased purchase of goods and services uh, from his store. So this is the only game that my entire family has really enjoyed playing. And uh, I remember one day I came home from work, and my son, who was five at the time, uh, stopped me as I walked in the door and said, Dad, I've got a, I've got a problem. I really need to talk to you. And uh, I, was, I was quite excited. He was five, you know, so we hadn't had this sort of, sort of paternal experience very much. Um, and I wasn't sure what to expect, so he, you know, he sat down and, and, and began talking to me. And he said, I, I don't know what to do. I've got a problem. Okay, okay, son, tell me, uh, 
tell me about your problem. Um, well, you know, I've got so much stuff. I've got so much stuff, I can't even move around <laughs> in, in my house anymore. And now I know he's talking about Animal Crossing. You know, I've got that, 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 that pear couch and that, that moon rock and all those shirts that I bought. Um, and, and the sort of the sort of space satellite that you gave me, and I, I just I don't even have any room to, to move around, to walk around. I need I need a bigger house. I need more space. <laughs> so I said, okay, that's uh, you know I, I understand. Um, so what do you think? He said, well, well, you know the, the problem is that see I I spent all my money buying this stuff for my house. And so I can't pay down my, my mortgage so that I can get an expansion, so I can expand, um, because I have all this debt from my, my first mortgage. And so what do I do? <laughs> so it was my five-year-old who had, uh, thanks to Animal Crossing, fallen into the trap of long-term debt that uh, <laughs> many of us have suffered under over the past couple of years. And, uh, and you know, obviously we use this as an opportunity to talk about, uh, talk about these things and how they worked and, and eventually he had to make some decisions about whether he was going to sell some of the things back, back to Tom Nook, of course, for the second-hand market um, and try to expand his house or, or maybe make do with less. And what's interesting about this game is that it's, it's clearly powerful in a, in, a, in a really meaningful way, even though it's just an entertainment game, a kind of cartoon-looking trifle. It engages players in complex, nuanced ideas that have the potential, at least, to change them for the better. It's rather the opposite of conventional wisdom about games. To understand how a game like this is ABC Fora.